much. I want to bring in our international affairs editor, Angela Diffley. Angela, we have a lot to unpack here. What are the big takeaways for you when you look over what's happened these past two days at this NATO summit in Lithuania? Uh, just to pick up something uh, that uh, Terry just said there, I, I gather as well that the British uh, uh, Defence Secretary, Ben Wallace, has been letting it be known that he uh, gave the same message to uh, Zelensky, saying, don't forget in your international appearances to show a bit more gratitude uh, because each of our governments has to persuade our peoples to stay on side with this. And he said that he apparently said last year to Zelensky, when Zelensky said, uh, these are the weapons that we would like, he said, hold on, we're not Amazon. And and so uh, there is, perhaps that explains perhaps the, the, the shift in tone from Zelensky. Uh, no doubt the Ukrainians are grateful that they have so much else to think about that perhaps it doesn't always come across, but democracies have to keep their people on side. And that message, it appears, has been uh, passed on to Zelensky. Uh, it, the big takeaway from this summit is that NATO stayed unified. That was the most important thing. Any serious divisions would have been a gift to Russia. And uh, whilst there were, Macron was among those who would have liked things to move a little bit faster in terms of uh, promising NATO membership to uh, Ukraine, uh, the US and Germany on the other side trying to hold that back. They managed to find some middle ground. Uh, there are, as we've discussed before, you know, reasons why it is complicated to promise too much. It would, uh, Ukraine is at war. Uh, that would automatically oblige every other NATO member to come to its defense. That could mean boots on the ground. That is just too much to ask for uh, NATO members at the moment. So Zelensky will have known that. Um, but they managed to find some wording which firms up that promise a little bit, hints at a little bit of a speed up, but doesn't give a formal invitation yet to Zelensky. Well, there's an argument to be made, don't you think, that the war in Ukraine really did a lot to unify NATO? It did exactly the opposite of what Vladimir Putin was, was wanting. It, there's a very clear argument. Uh, Finland and Sweden are Sweden very shortly to become uh, members. That has halted Russia's stated ambition of trying to uh, stop NATO expansion. Instead, there are now two new members and perhaps more to follow. Uh, so, yes, it certainly in many ways has strengthened NATO. Emmanuel Macron talking there as well alluded to his idea of strategic autonomy, which he has regularly pushed, whereby Europe takes more responsibility and makes more of its own decisions about its own security. And the argument against that has always been, well, we already have NATO. And he hinted there in his speech that we're beginning to see the beginnings of how this might work, how the two might be side by side. Europe needs NATO, but is gradually assuming more responsibility for its own area. And that is a direct result of uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It has certainly strengthened NATO. Don't forget Emmanuel Macron very recently said NATO was brain dead. Suddenly it has become all important.